Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 133 of the 580 show with me, Crawley, and Josh. Thank you. What's up, gangsters? Yeah, we're back for another uh, episode. Going to be an exciting show. Um, This week, we're going to talk just a little bit about Battle of the Bridge, kind of like maybe some things that we didn't, obviously, last week. We ended, literally, I think awards ended. We were outside recording the podcast within like 10 minutes of handing out the last award. So obviously, a little bit scatterbrained. Um, I just, if something stood out to you guys, an accomplishment, a lift, something like that, talk about Battle of the Bridge real quick. And then a really exciting part of the episode Right as you're listening right now, Polar Express 2 signups are live on Iron Podium. I'm going to go through the events real quick. These guys have no idea what the events are, so I'm going to get their live reaction. They have no <laughs> idea about any of them. Um, I'm really excited to see what you guys think of the events this year for Polar Express. We're having 50 people, um, 50 spots for signups. Uh, so get signed up right now if you're listening, and let's sell this thing out quick. I am going to have a wait list, but, uh, but yeah, it's going to be a great episode. So, Northeast Regionals, mm-hmm. both days, and Battle of the Bridge has come and gone. <clears throat> I know I sound like a broken record, but I got to say it again. Thank you to the volunteers. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to the competitors. Thank you to everyone who made this weekend possible. It was, you know, when you're going into a weekend for a show or really any big event in your life, you kind of expect Murphy's law, right? Anything that will go wrong, will go wrong, could go wrong, will go wrong. Um, and, um, you know, obviously stuff, little stuff went wrong, but I really don't know if I could have asked for a better weekend from start to finish. It just, everything came together so perfectly from the way the gym got set up to the way we tore it down, to set up, to put it, putting it back and everything in between. You know, I was worried about the sandbag toss because the weather was really bad for the weekend. Sunday morning when we went to toss, it was sunny and bright and perfect. It was the only time we got the whole weekend. So just, I'm just so thankful for everyone and everything that, that, that made this possible, you know? Um, and like, as far as time, I think we, 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 time went really perfect. Um, I think the athletes left happy. Um, The pictures from Jimmy uh, came out great. The video that Dante put together, the videos that Dante put together came out amazing. They're on our YouTube channel if you're not, if you haven't looked at them yet. Um, What are your guys kind of like, anything that kind of stood out? Competitors, you know, as you guys as competitors, things that you saw happen. I mean, like first event was eye-opening for me. We started with Max Deadlift with the regionals and I didn't realize we'd have guys opening it at eight fifteen Axel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was unreal. We, I didn't think we were gonna have to whip out the calibrated plates and I quickly realized we had to have a curveball for that. So that was cool. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, that was, that was really impressive. Um, two guys hit eight fifteen on deadlifts just happens to be that the one, the one open there um, for the win. So that was obviously impressive. Um, the presentation across the board was awesome. We had five warm up bars for deadlifts, which was great. Um, having our own warm ups individually as groups, almost like as a flight, um, for, before each event was great because you didn't have to rush. Well, how many athletes were there? 40, 45, yeah, 40, yeah, a little bit. For over the, I'm specifically speaking for the regional, yeah, because that's what I competed in. Um, we didn't have to rush 45 people through all the warmups at once and then just run through all the classes. It was nice to get that 10 minute um, before each event because it really got you like, you know, normally if you do that, like as a super heavyweight, I'm waiting, I'm going, we're going through entire classes. So like it would be 45 minutes. I mean, mm-hmm. like half at hour least. at least yeah. before touching the events or touching the equipment. So <laughs> That was really nice, and I think everyone benefited from it, not just me. Um, so I, I know I talked about that last week, but I think that was really that was a big it was a big difference, and it was it made a big difference for everyone. Yeah, you know what's funny because I I had an opportunity to feel bad for super heavies at nationals two years ago because for some reason we went on day two the we went in reverse order. So uh, yeah. 
Remember that heavyweight yep. work, heavyweights went first all day on day two, and then we worked back to the lightweights. And I just remember, you know, like uh, super heavy, we would warm up and then super heavyweights would go. And then I'm just like, man, I, I haven't touched the bar in over an hour. Like yeah. this is a high risk. You're supposed venue. to be warmed up. Like yeah. that's not, that's not warming up. Yeah. And then you're sitting in that little you know, back room. It's not the yeah, warmest yeah, area either. Right. It's kind of cold. There's nowhere to sit. You know, I actually felt like um, it was what I had in mind was doing the flight warm ups going into this year. It was just an idea I had. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure other promoters probably do it. I'm, I, I didn't see it anywhere, but I'm sure people have done it. Right. But having, you know, break your break your show down into depending on how big it is, you know, anywhere from two to five, you know, categories and then have give them what probably saying is like have each group warm up and then go. And I actually felt like logistically it helped us move the show faster too, because you don't, you don't have everyone clumped up on a couple bars or one or two implements. And then a group is ready in like, I'm telling you, we set a timer for 10 minutes to allow a group to warm up. And they were telling me after six minutes, they were ready to go. Right. Like they were rushing right. up, versus like the promoter rushing the competitors. The competitors were rushing the promoter, which right. I thought was so cool about our show. Because if you didn't listen last week, day one for regionals, 40 something athletes was two hours and 12 minutes. And day two was two hours and 20 minutes. And that's from the first lift to the very last lift. For three events so, each day. Yeah. So, you know, we did six events in four and a half hours. Right. Six events in four and a half hours, and competitors were telling me they were ready to go. They were right. telling me they wanted to stop warming up. Right. It wasn't the other way around. And so I definitely yeah. think that that flight thing is definitely pretty a cool. And thing. the nice thing too was like, for example, on day two, uh, the ladies got to go do the sandbags while we did Viking press and vice versa. Right? Like you're still you still have competitors doing events. <clears throat> So that they're not sitting around because no one wants to go to a competition and sit around for hours. Right. right. So, so it worked out, that worked out really well too. And in the local show, everybody started with the deadlift move and then you're into stations and then you finish the event at the end for final placing with the frame race. Right. Yeah. Like that, it, it moves the show faster. Everybody's doing something all the time. So they, there's not going to be time to be upset about things when you're constantly doing something, right? Like yeah. people's That's attention. A good point. Are like psychologically, you're not going yeah. to eat yourself up. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I always love about the comps, I, I didn't ask it at regionals because it wouldn't make sense because it wasn't anyone's first comp because you had to qualify for regionals. Right. But at bridge, when I ask whose first comp is this and everyone's, you know, you get all those hands that fly up at the novices. And I just love that. And I had a, a group of guys that were there and said, you know, if this was my first competition, a group of guys from regionals that came together, they said, if this was my first competition, you know, I would have fallen in love with strongman. And like, that means a lot. Cause that's our goal is like 580 barbells to grow strongman and just continue to raise the bar for athletes. So like I, that meant a lot to hear, but it's so cool. Like that's always my, one of my favorite moments of the weekend when you start rolls and you're like, all right, whose first show is this? And all, yeah. all the hands fly up. And it's like, it's our mission now to like make this show awesome for you guys, because right. I want you to continue to do strong, man. So, yeah, I mean, so many great, you know, I, I think we kind of, we kind of talked about it enough, you know, I don't know if there's anything else that kind of stands out, but just an amazing weekend. And I can't wait to do it again in the winter and the summer and keep doing it, you know, doing our two shows a year and, uh, I, I hope people keep coming back. And if you do keep coming back, you know, the bigger the show gets, it's going to, the show's going to get bigger and better every single year, the more people that show up. So we've already got ideas and plans for summer of 2024 for bridge three, and it's going to be great. But, uh, but yeah. Um, and also we had 16 members of 580 compete between the two events this weekend, which is crazy. That's cool. That's cool. Like, I didn't know it was that many. Yeah, Ali and I sat down and we were counting and I'm like, wow, I didn't even realize we were, I didn't even think we were in double digits. You know, we had, um, uh, we had two teenagers do it. Mm -hmm. um, we had some first timers like, so Jim Mooney, if yep. this is really inside, but Jim Mooney's, a, I believe he's 53, mm -hmm. 53, 53 yep. years old. He did his first ever strongman competition with guys. He did heavyweight novice. And got second place with guys half his age and just 
he loved it before, but like first competition, he definitely got bit by like the strongman bug. Yeah, where, absolutely. Like, yep. and that that see, that's like what I'm talking about. That is so cool, and like that's worth the price of admission for me. Like, you know, as a promoter, that's so cool. But 16 people from 5A, I got to shout them out. You know, like great job, everyone. You know, mm -hmm. um, but what a weekend! Thank you guys all again. Um, I want to talk about Polar Express. I think Frawley wants to too. <laughs> so, well, if, rumor has it I'm gonna like these events, so we'll see. I told Frawley he's gonna like these events. I don't know if he'll actually like these events. I think he was trolling you. I probably gonna hate him. It's probably five grip events. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so just for everyone, so I don't get bitched at. Uh, yeah. it, we're 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 recording this during the week, but we are. A little under six months out. So Frawley is learning the events a couple days before, but he is not allowed to sign up until the exact time it opens, 7 p.m. when this podcast released. So he does he has no advantage, anything like that. I mean, I guess I'm not he, training for this show. Yeah. I'm I not mean, starting I guess, training for this I guess show he could right start now, training so. this show six months early, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, pay, like, pay attention to our stories. You'll uh, you might yeah. get a little hint. <laughs> Yeah. And okay, so I want to preface because I try to do like a Christmas theme with each event, you know, like la like like a little name, you know, like like a Christmas gift front hold was last year, you know. But these these names are just rough drafts. So if you have a better name where you're like Josh, you're an idiot, you missed the play on words, dude, tell me because I want to change the name to something yeah, better. Might, might change like, it. Like some of them are corny, and I just couldn't think of a better name. But uh, I I really, really, out of like the five shows I've ran, I think these are the best five events personally that I like. So um, I'm excited. The drum, weight nature. Drum roll, please. Yeah. So let me preface a couple more things real quick. So obviously signups are open on Iron Podium. It's six, $60 <laughs> to sign up. Um, And uh, the there's a couple – events and i'll announce them as it go the weight matrix will not be ready at this time just because i don't want to rush a weight matrix out for a maybe an implement or something that i haven't done and tested on all the classes we have six months i'll try over the next month and a half to get the weight matrix 100 percent done within the next six weeks i just have to test some stuff with space and everything like that but <clears throat> event one let's go it's about time you guys ready yeah Max Christmas tree press. So a max log. Let's go. Competitors. Let's go. <laughs> competitors yes. will have competitors will have three attempts to successfully press the heaviest log. Men will be using a 12 inch MB power center log. Women will be using women and teens will be using a 10 inch pit bull log. 20 pound jumps for men, 10 pound jumps for women. Wait, we're you using the, the Mark Bart Mike Bartos. Yep, Mike Bartos. Let's go. Is it going to look like a Christmas tree? No. But a, a rumor is that I might have a second Mike Bartos log by then. So we may be running three lanes. We will see. We'll be running three lanes regardless, actually. Novice men will use a 12 inch <clears throat> triple log, if not. That'd be sick. So first event, Max Log. Event two, my favorite. Chink. Wait, check mark. Frawley approves. Chink, chink. <laughs> All right. We'll see how many of these Frawley likes. Yep. Um, My favorite event. The naughty or and I hey let me say, Allie came up with his name, so I gotta give her credit because I I didn't know what to call it. Allie came up with this event actually all herself. I didn't. I had another deadlift event shows. So if you guys don't like this event, Ooh, it's a deadlift. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, so, I have an, I already know. What the, I already know what this is gonna be. So event two, the naughty or nice deadlift. So it is a deadlift. For bar. It has a deadlift for reps. Uh huh. So competitors will have two bars in front of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. To choose from a lighter mm -hmm. and a heavier option, so yeah. naughty or nice. Any amount of reps on the heavier bar meet, beats any amount of reps on the lighter bar. The bars are stiff bars. They are stiff power bars. They are not deadlift bars. These are Texas power bars. A stiff power bar from the floor. Um, the weights will be like, for example, um, looking at like the lightweight men. My class will be uh like i i believe i'm not looking at the mate weight make sure right now but i think it'll be like 495 and like 405 and it'll go up from there like for all your class will be probably 675 and 585 yeah. for our supers let's go um, 
And that's on a stiff bar, so it's a little bit harder. <clears throat> but obviously, I want that heavier option to really like be pretty heavy. Like, yeah, it not, should be. Someone's it should not be getting, challenging. Yeah, someone's not getting ten reps, but maybe like five or six would sure. work for really good yep. deadlifters. Um, so that's event two. Not your nice. So now, rep. did you say this? The heavier any reps on the heavier bar beats the lighter. Okay. Yes. You said yes. that. So. Yep. Uh, um, check, check mark for all your proofs. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> event three, an event that we've never done at 580, rocking around the Christmas tree, a Conan's wheel around a Christmas tree. I knew tree. it was going to be Conan's wheel. <sighs> you were so, talking, about, we were talking knew, about the other day. I so, knew there was going to be a Conan's wheel in the show. So this is one of the ones I got to get the weight matrix down for. Um, I don't know if there will actually be a Christmas tree in the middle. Maybe I'll put like a mistletoe or something in the That'd middle. Cool. I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> Not around you. Oh. But uh, but yeah, I'll so comparators will pick up a Conan's wheel, carry it as far as possible once you drop your out 60 second time limit. See you, Frawley. Frawley? Boo. I, right. I've never done one, but a knee jerk reaction is I, I, I really like a Conan's wheel. I like the other two a lot better. You should just borrow the wheel of pain from Arnold. <laughs> just be Can honest. Imagine getting that down in the basement. You can just put it in the parking lot. Event four. Santa sleigh pull. So it'll, it'll be competitors will start behind a line. Once the judge says go, they'll begin run up, grab a rope, and stand in the sit down in the tire and pull the sled until it crosses the line. There will be a Santa Claus in the sled. I will try to have reindeers along with it, but probably just Santa. And it's going to be anywhere from 50 to 60 foot sled pull, arm over arm. Um, what is our rope? One and a half inch rope? I think so. I, think, I thought it was two inch. I'll have to look. I whatever, think they they use the, whatever they use the nationals. Though. I believe I it it's a inch. one and a half inch rope. Okay. But, but uh, yeah, that's event four. Check mark. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna really try to like actually get like a Santa Claus thing and like do up a rogue sled and like make it look cool or actually have that will be cool. Have a real Santa sled built. Yeah. That has so, the potential to be an awesome event. Yeah. Now the only thing I have question for you guys is it, ha it has to so where we always do our events are they're on horse stall mats. Yeah. So it's gonna be I don't know if we're gonna do it. I don't know how a sled slides on those horse stall mats. I would I envision think. they would not. Yeah. I would probably just move everything on the turf temporarily. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to just switch the turf just for that one event. Right. Um, I don't know if, cause I don't That's, really, honestly, I don't want to do that because the way we have the gym set up and stuff and all what if you put events, like a long carpet over top of the, I, I, yeah, I it's, that's not a bad idea to be honest. I, I don't know yet. Right. It could be winter themed and outside in the parking lot. I don't really want to do that just because it's December 16th. It'll be cold as hell. Yeah. Yep. These, these past winters, who knows? Yeah. Um, but we'll see where we'll see where that's going to be, but that is going to be an event and it's going to look really cool. Um, event five. I still have a few things to decide on this one, but this is the final event. Event five is a snowball fight. So it is that's gotta be stones atlas stone over bar. Yeah, baby. Um, and we are doing it. I'll put my parenthesis, my my quotation marks up. Clash PSL style. That makes sense. So competitors will be we're only gonna re this is the final event of the day. <laughs> competitors will be reordered only for this event. So reverse signups. Uh, you you have an advantage for signing up early for this show because it goes in reverse order of signups. Event five will reorder based on the standings. We will start at the lowest two athletes, and then whenever uh, one athlete drops out, the next competitor steps in, and you do as many reps as you can. You have you have thirty seconds to return the stone. So let me just lay this out for people because I know this sounds confusing. Say it is there's six of us in our class, right? Mm -hmm. The sixth and fifth place people say Dante and Frawley are in sixth and fifth in a class. They will start with the, the stone over bar and they will continue to load it back and forth. And I'll say Dante fails on his fourth rep. And I'm in what place am I in? Fourth, fourth. place. Fourth. Mm -hmm. So Dante's out. I am in starting with zero reps. Frawley is at four reps. 
Frawley right. returns it. I return it to him. Frawley misses on his sixth rep. Frawley's out now, and the third place person comes in. Right. And it is just however many reps you can get. You have 30 seconds um, from when the stone hits the ground from the person sending it over to you. Um, uh, we, will, we will make videos if, on these fairly detailed. Yeah. So If you um, – if you are the last one, like you're in first place and you want to keep going, you have the full 30 seconds. Like you will put it over the bar. We will roll it back to you and you will have 30 seconds to do another. Sure. Round. Yeah. So like, cause, cause if you need to win that event and sit in like, you know, seconds ahead of you by six reps still, yep. you obviously have to get the reps. So it'll be allotted for you. So, so yeah. Um, so yeah, we got a max log, a Trump deadlift, a Conan's wheel, a arm over arm sled pool, and a snowball fight. Hey, four out of five ain't bad, man. You and you, hey, you never know. You might end up liking the Conan's wheel. That's true. I haven't done it yet. I was I was very skeptical about Viking press until the regional, and now I'm kind of a fan of it. I I enjoyed training that. So yeah, it'll be it'll be a really really fun event. Um, yeah. I just we have a Conan's wheel that's been used in strongman comps before. Um, Dante, you actually used it in a comp, didn't you? No. Oh, you didn't? It was there when I was in a strongman comp. Oh, though. gotcha. But yeah, so it's like, I mean, it's it's built for strongman comps. I just want to play around with it a little bit now that Bridge is done and be able to kind of get a weight matrix going on it. I guys, there's no point. It's it's June. What day is it when this releases, Dante? June, July second. July second. July second. July second. July second. There's no point of me rushing a weight matrix out. The weights are going to be doable, but you know it is strongman. They're going to be somewhat heavy, but there's no point for me to write a hundred on Conan's wheel when I have no idea yet. And with half right. these events, you could probably look on Iron Podium and compare other shows to yeah. just get an idea, right? Yeah, I am. I'm having a moral debate between tacky or no tacky on stones for over bar. So uh, I'm I'm leaning tacky against my better judgment, but I will see. So, my biceps are hopeful that you will pick yeah tacky. yeah just I, put the just put some plastic down you'll be fine i yeah i just worry i it's not you guys i worry about people i don't know that may not respect the gym and i the last thing i want but if if i have a good inadequate cleanup system where i have it well you're gonna do like a parallel thing shows with a baby powder area or whatever <laughs> yeah well yeah, but you know how tacky is dude tacky yeah. gets on the bottom of your shoes it, it gets, gets on your freaking it gets, shirt it gets it on can, your shorts like it just can literally ruin a gym. Like yeah. I'll make if I don't do tacky, I'll make the weights where they're doable, and I don't feel like anyone's risking injury. Like honestly, I just, I you know, so I'm in a debate right now. I just want to, I want to assure that I'll be able to keep the gym in working condition because we are a functioning. You know what I mean? Like that that night we are going back to a normal gym, so it's like, you know, I don't want to ruin it. But even even though I love these events, Josh, I still give you my word that I will make the best live stream in strongman yeah, history for the that's show. That's what I want to. That's what I want to talk about too. Uh, <laughs> this will be live stream with audio this year. Well, I I made the call to not do audio last year because I didn't think it would work, and we we ironed out a lot of hiccups. Dante did. If you go watch the Polar Express live stream from last year, we did an amazing job. And I I've upgraded a lot of equipment since then, so we're not going to use phones with Minecraft graphic quality you know, cameras and everything. I'm going to yeah, make I mean, it try. I'm going to try to make it look like really high class. Uh, yeah. Stream, if you so. didn't, if you, and it will be free, it'll be on you, our YouTube channel. YouTube channel. If you didn't watch it last year, Dante had everyone's name, weight classes, the weight being lifted. Like it was really, really impressive for our first live stream. The way I wanted to do yeah. it was like, if someone's grandma was on it, they could easily see like, Hey, Probably doing 135, 225, 365 here or whatever. They know exactly what they're watching. Yeah, because half right. these people watching are parents and grandparents. And they don't know what's don't, going on. Yeah. Right? The, the easier you can make it for the viewer, the more information that you can lay out in an organized manner, the better. Because the last thing yeah. you want is for people to go, I think that's like 200 pounds. Right. And then meanwhile, right? you there's don't hundreds on the side and it's 405 or whatever, right. you know, like, right. Yeah. Yeah. So and are we planning on having a commentary booth? We'll see. Potentially. We'll see. It, it, it depends if we can get the right person 
or people for it. So I think I, think I know two of the good people for it. But if you're a, <laughs> if you're a strong man or interested in strong men to know about, it, and you're interested in commentating Polar Express live from Five Eighty Barbell, let us know. Yeah, send us a send us a, like send a, your you know, resume. A, yeah, your resume. Yeah, we want a resume. Send we your resume. Demo reel. Dante's, Dante's Instagram. There will be an interview process. <laughs> um but yeah so it's gonna be an awesome weekend i've yeah i i'll talk more about stuff as i know for sure i would rather under promise and over deliver because i have some stuff i could say right now but i want to i want to get all ironed out first yeah but you don't need to you also don't need to say it like a lot of those stuff for the regional and battle at the bridge we didn't know about yeah we walk in right right you you told us like we walk in and the band I was didn't, set up, we didn't even know that yeah. these things were happening. So like, the, yeah, that's what people don't know. Like, people think I'm joking when they, you guys only know. I don't tell anyone. No, like Talk. I don't. I want, <laughs> I want Frawley to be as surprised as the person that comes from freaking Florida. Right. You know, like. Yeah, Josh tells like, me shut up and train. That's literally what I told him. <laughs> I I showed people at 580 like the podium and like the custom nameplates because I just had to show someone, but no right. one that was like competing or anything like that. Yeah, I was just proud of them. So, yeah, it's gonna be. I think this year I'm gonna not hang lights. I'm gonna do those little buzzer things that people put on their houses. Oh, like the okay. hologram, like the hologram yeah. things. I'm gonna have those. I'm gonna try to get those uniform and like going around the gym because. And just make it look Christmassy. I'll have Christmas decorations up. But if you guys don't know, last year we hung up, what was it, over 5,000 lights? It was a lot. It was just too many lights. I think there's still some lights up, dude. No, there's not. They're down. But we hung up so many lights, and it took so many weekends of, like, my dad's time. And it was, like, it was kind of like a diminishing return where we didn't get much out of it. Like it looked cool, but there's I think there's ways we can make the show look cooler without just hanging sure. five thousand Christmas lights. Yep. So if you have, I hope to see everyone there. I hope we can sell this thing out quick. Um, and if you have ideas for Christmas themed stuff, different names that I didn't think of for these five events, um, ways we can decorate the gym. Someone you know that will do a good job commentating this live on our YouTube, let us let us know. Because I'm really, really excited. We're going to make this show enormous every year. And it's going to be an amazing show for the athletes. Like, amazing. Like, I want you to know, like, if you're listening and you're thinking about competing, it's not, like, just a silly Christmas show. Like, yeah, it's Christmas theme, But, like, when you're there, like, it's 100% it's a full war. Like, you're doing yes. your five events. It's – I paid my I paid my sanctioning fee through Strongman Corp. It has nationals invites. It has regionals invites. Like, it's a good way to get your nationals invite quick for next year. Yeah, you can watch the – we did, like, a highlight video on it, too. You can kind yeah. of see, like, it's not just, like, wiggle dicking around. We're just all no, – everyone, everyone's still not. competing pretty good. It was a very competitive show last year. I mean, every, it, very it's competitive. A, it's a heavy local show. Like, it's heavy. Um, We're going to have one men's novice class. We're going to have one women's novice class, teens masters whoever wants to sign up those classes will be up um you know my thought behind it is only having 50 competitors um is i don't really want to have multiple novice classes you know i think it's just yeah, you just don't have enough you don't have enough room and i yeah, don't mean like, to like push people away it's just yeah yeah the the weights will be doable for a novice and it you know it's going to be an amazing weekend i can't wait to start planning uh, getting some logistics planned out. Uh, yeah, sign up for Pool Express too on, on Iron Podium. You guys have anything else to say about it? any questions about the events or anything like that that came to your mind, real like knee jerk? Not that I can think of right now. The only thing that's really mm-hmm. up in the air for me is where on what surface I'm going to do the sled pool and tacky or no tacky for stones. And I'm like 90% on tacky right now. Yeah, I think the I honestly feel like for the sled, you almost have to do it on the turf. But yeah, just, if you could figure a way to like lay something down over top of the mats, like Dante's saying, that might not be that bad. Yeah. Roll up the red carpet. That's all I got to say. Unless I get, which is a possibility, like a literal live, like 
full size Santa sleigh uh, and do it outside. That's the only way I'll do it outside. If it was big, if it was big enough to not bring downstairs, that'd be pretty like, cool too. Epic enough. Like if I, <laughs> if I can get an actual full size Santa sleigh, I will hire a Santa Claus for that event to come and sit in it. I know okay. one. He goes to our gym. He's six want, foot five, three hundred forty pounds. No, I want I want a real one in character. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I am. I will say, I am thinking of a way to incorporate a charity because it's obviously like a really tough time for people. You know, that time of year can be really tough for families. Um, I know down in Florida. I think it's Florida's strongest man. It's one of the shows that the Allen guy runs. He requires every single competitor and spectator oh, yeah. to bring one toy. That's it. I've seen that. It's the price yeah. of admission. Um, and if you don't bring a toy, you can't compete. And I, I would really love to do something like that where we can give back to like the needy in a, in you know, that, especially it being a really difficult time of the year. And For if sure. we could get 150, 200 toys, like that would be so awesome and so cool. So if someone has like a, uh, what's the one that 96 One Kiss does? The stuff of us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be really cool if we could stuff up a couple of truckloads and go present the local stuff of us with a full bus load of toys from our. Sure. Uh-huh. Something like that. I would really love to do. Um You know, just because, like I said, it is such a tough time. Like you forget, you know, you're so much more fortunate than some families. And, you know, in that time of year, it's just really tough for some people. So if we can really turn into a positive, that would be really cool. So I like the toy idea. That's how I'm leaning. If someone has another idea of something we can do, um, we'll have a 50-50 raffle that will go towards that as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll really turn into a positive as well for that. Dante, what'd you say? We're not we're not doing the live stream though unless we have a thousand subs by then. So that's what Dante say, told me. You're putting stuff in my mouth recently, Josh. I didn't say all that. I'm good with it. Subscribe. Hunt. So yeah. Tell people. It, sound, it sounds silly, but it really does help us in Strongman yeah. continue towards our goal of growing the sport if you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're gonna be able to put more quality videos, do more quality shows, more quality everything. And I heard uh her little birdie told me it's 750 subscribers. We might be oh, doing yeah. something big. Yeah, oh, that yeah. is. Yeah. Are we doing that? So are we doing that once we hit 750? I don't know. We, we'll talk about it, but we have, we have plans on. Uh, we have 465 subscribers now. So we got a long way to go before Polar Express. So if you want your grandma and your aunt and your uncle to watch you compete, make sure you subscribe to our channel. So um, that's it for this week. Go sign up for Polar Express 2. Thank you to everyone who came out to Battle of the Bridge 2 weekend, Northeast Regional Weekend. Next year is going to be even bigger and more epic. And uh, we will see you guys all next week for episode 134. Peace. Peace.